Do you know what is the perfect weapon now? A daze that can destroy not only nations but human civilizations too. No, it is not a gun or grenade, but it is the cyber system that you are using to watch this video. Yes, you heard that right. Cyber warfare is a serious threat to the world now and especially in the coming times. Nations of all sizes are constantly attempting to outwit one another. At times, they engage in virtual combat rather than in-person conflict. They employ a variety of cunning strategies to take down one another's computer networks, steal information, or even wreak havoc on daily life. You see, cyber warfare is more than just hackers typing frantically while seated in dimly lit rooms. It's far more intricate to launch cyber attacks, governments, the military, and extremely intelligent tech professionals collaborate. Anything from government networks to power plants, banks, or even medical facilities may be the target of these attacks. Imagine what might happen if an electricity grid hack caused your city's power to abruptly go out. That's the kind of mayhem that can result from cyber warfare. But why do nations act in this way? Well, control and power are everything. Similar to actual conflicts, nations aim to defend their interests and demonstrate their might. They can weaken their opponents without ever firing a shot by initiating cyber attacks. This is when things start to get interesting. Cyber warfare is more than just nations battling it out online. It's also linked to geopolitical tensions, which are essentially the complex ties that exist between nations. Moreover, the 2020 solar wind strike was similar to an adversary secretly inserting a little malware into a widely used and reliable software. They may then infiltrate thousands thousands of computer networks, including prominent ones like the US government, thanks to that bug. The blame fell on Russia's operatives, who were said to have carried out this significant cyber theft. And there's the 2021 drama over the Colonial Pipeline. Imagine waking up to discover that local gas stations are running out of fuel because some cyber criminals locked up the computers of a vital pipeline. That's precisely what took place. Using ransomware, a group by the name of Darkseid took control of the Colonial Pipeline and demanded a large payment. Panic buying was sparked by this catastrophe, which also affected fuel supply throughout the US East Coast. Recall the incident where China was seen snooping around on Microsoft's domain. They broke into thousands of machines throughout the globe by taking advantage of a flaw in Microsoft's email program. The Chinese hackers were allegedly spying on people for secrets as a part of a government squad. It's like having someone read your private emails covertly, only on a much larger scale. Not to be overlooked is the continuous cyber warfare between China and the United States. Each side is accusing the other of engaging in dishonest online behavior, comparable to a virtual tug of war where both teams are attempting to outwit one another. China retaliates by claiming that the US is engaging in the same cyber attacks that the US claims China has been conducting against American computer networks. This is a classic scenario of two fierce adversaries saying, you started it. And there's also the never-ending cyber war between Ukraine and Russia. With strikes flying back and forth between the two nations, it resembles a digital cold war. Ukraine continues to accuse Russia of attempting to use devious cyber tactics to interfere with its infrastructure and administration. What makes all of this important then? Imagine though if someone broke into your home and took everything you owned. When a country is hacked, it feels like this. It's not just about losing information, it's also about feeling exposed and losing confidence. Furthermore, compromised government systems and other critical infrastructure have an impact on people's day-to-day -day life. Nations that are at odds with one another frequently turn to cyber warfare as a means of settling scores or gaining the upper hand. It's similar to a high-stakes game of chess where the pieces are lines of code instead of pieces on a board.
In simple words, two nations engaged in a heated conflict over a disputed region may attempt to outdo one another by using cyber attacks. They may show off their might without taking the chance of a full-scale conflict. Moreover, cyber warfare goes on very micro levels when we talk geopolitics. One of the main practices in the scenario is state hacking, a complex process to pull off. It functions like a high-stakes game of chess played in dimly lit internet cafes when each move and assault are painstakingly planned. The casualties in this virtual theater of war are digital rather than real, leaving a trail of hacked systems and damaged networks in their wake. Nations engage in cyber warfare for a variety of intricate and multi-dimensional reasons. Sometimes it's about gaining a tactical advantage over opponents, while other times it's for obtaining intelligence or destroying vital infrastructure. Whatever the precise goal, one thing is certain, cyber warfare has evolved into a vital tool in the toolbox of the contemporary state, capable of having a big impact on world events. One of the best known examples of state-sponsored cyber attacks is the notorious Stuxnet malware. When this sneaky malware first surfaced in 2010, it was monstrous on Iran's nuclear program, an endeavor that the US and Israel were said to have worked together on. Stuxnet, which was intended to thwart Iran's efforts to acquire nuclear weapons, was a warning to the world about the potential consequences of cyber warfare and a prime example of its power and expertise. Cyber warfare is not, however, limited to superpowers like the US and Russia. Its instruments are now being used by smaller countries and even non-state entities to further their objectives. Groups like Anonymous have gained international attention for their cyber attacks against governments and businesses, frequently disguising their actions as activism or protest. The democratization of cyber warfare has caused a shift in the geopolitical environment, upending established power structures and ushering in a new era of asymmetric warfare. Furthermore, the lines separating war and peace have become less distinct due to the spread of cyber warfare. Conflicts were marked in earlier times by obvious battles and official treaties. But in the digital age, conflict can happen without a single shot being fired, which makes international relations more difficult. The lack of clarity surrounding cyber aggression has resulted in increased international tensions and a fresh degree of confusion in diplomatic discussions as countries attempt to understand its subtleties. The geopolitical competition that still exists between the US and China is a powerful example of these intricacies. Both countries are engaged in a fierce battle for economic supremacy and technical innovation, and to obtain the upper hand, they have turned to cyber methods. These cyber warfare conflicts, which range from covert espionage to overt acts of sabotage, have increased tensions between superpowers and raised fears of an impending cyber cold war. The days of risky field operations are long gone, and in their place, they send a group of skilled hackers to breach their competitors' digital defenses. These cyber insurgents use a wide range of strategies, including the deceptive draw of phishing emails and the sneaky use of malware, to get past defenses and steal intelligence without leaving a trace on enemy territory. Among the history of well-known cyber attacks is the Sony Pictures Entertainment hacking incident of 2014, which the US government has definitively linked to North Korea. Sensitive information, including footage from unreleased movies and private letters, was exposed in this blatant attack, which serves as a sobering reminder of how susceptible even the most secure companies are to cyber attacks.
Still, the threat of digital espionage is not limited to the halls of power. It also haunts the boardrooms of massive corporations. Industries where intellectual property is highly valued are sometimes targeted by competitors who use hackers to steal important information such as proprietary designs, trade secrets, or customer information, giving them an unfair advantage in the competitive world of business. However, in the murky depths of the internet underworld, a brand new kind of mercenaries appears as cyber operators. Similar to their analog counterparts, these mercenaries operate using code rather than steel, offering their services to the highest bidder, which may include governments, businesses, or evil syndicates. They participate in cyber espionage operations that are customized to the preferences of their sponsors. In the realm of geopolitical tensions and cyber warfare, we must know that intelligence organizations are crucial. They operate behind the scenes, gathering intelligence, assessing risks, and occasionally even carrying out cyber attacks, much like spies in motion pictures. The intelligence services absorb all available information about foreign nations, their political systems, and their capacities, much like sponges do. They use a variety of techniques, such as cyber reconnaissance, espionage, and surveillance to gather data. Governments can use this information to better understand the goals, capabilities, and vulnerabilities of their opponents in the digital sphere. Determining the perpetrator of a cyber attack is among the first things to do when it happens. In this process, intelligence agencies are essential because they use their knowledge to track digital traces, decipher code, and make connections. When it comes to attribution, intelligence agencies are the detectives with the know-how to solve the case, much as in a high-tech mystery. The intelligence services use cyber espionage, much like traditional spies do, to obtain private information from foreign nations. Without leaving a trace, they breach government systems, hack into international networks, and steal secrets. Governments gain important intelligence from this covert operation about the political, military, and economic plans of their rivals. However, by foiling enemy spies and hackers, intelligence services also attempt to defend their nations from cyber threats. They keep an eye out for indications of intrusion on their networks, examine malware for any dangers, and create defense mechanisms to keep the bad guys out. It's similar to putting up virtual traps to apprehend potential invaders before they have a chance to do damage. Intelligence services occasionally take the offensive and launch cyber attacks against their enemies. These operations can involve everything from damaging vital infrastructure to interfering with enemy communications. Like virtual acts of war, offensive cyber operations aim to undermine, destabilize, or exact revenge on adversarial governments or groups. These agencies give decision makers essential information that they need to make well-informed choices about cyber defense, foreign policy, and national security. They evaluate the possible effects of cyber attacks, provide insights into new threats, and counsel government officials on appropriate countermeasures. Thus, Intelligence services are essential to determining the geopolitical environment and defending national interests in cyberspace. Cyber attacks have the potential to sour diplomatic ties between nations. Accusations and counter-accusations are common when a country is thought to have launched cyber attacks against another. Cooperation on other matters can be hampered by the erosion of international trust and the tenseness or even closure of diplomatic channels. The possibility of an escalation is increased by the anonymous and defensible character of cyber attacks. A cyber operation that is viewed as an act of aggression can set off a military reaction and dangerously escalate relations between nations. This risk is increased by the absence of established norms and regulations governing cyber warfare, which raises the possibility of errors in judgment and unexpected outcomes. 
cyber attacks that aim to compromise vital infrastructure, companies, or financial institutions may have a big impact on the economy. Economic instability and a decline in trust in global investment and trade can result from disruptions to vital services, supply chains, and financial institutions. This economic repercussion can sour ties between nations and obstruct initiatives to promote economic growth and cooperation. The act of cyber espionage by intelligence services has the potential to sour relations with both allies and rivals. Finding out that a close ally has been surveilling private or public networks can undermine confidence and hinder collaboration in domains including intelligence exchanges, defense alliances, and diplomatic discussions. Similar to this, international espionage disclosures can cause diplomatic problems and tense relations between nations. Nation-to-nation -nation trust can be damaged by persistent cyber attacks and espionage, which can also degrade established online behavior norms. The act of aggressive or hostile cyber action by nations erodes efforts to establish standards of state conduct in cyberspace and responsible behavior. The decline in standards and trust makes it more difficult to forge international agreements and regulations to control cybercrime and improve cybersecurity. As a result, the tensions in cyber warfare can have an impact on the emergence of rivalries and alliances in politics. To confront shared risks or challenges in cyberspace, nations may build coalitions by aligning with those who have similar interests or concerns about cybersecurity. On the other hand, espionage operations or cyber attacks could sour ties between nations and fuel the creation of fresh geopolitical rivalries and fault lines. With this, we come to the end of this video. What are your views on cyber warfare? Do share with us in the comment section below. If you enjoyed watching the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you soon in the next video.